Welcome back to our second episode. I am Henrietta Kataikoski and today we're going to be talking about security. And I'm Andy Varrell. Um, Henrietta, in the Game is a Foot video series, uh, we see the impact of a hacker taking down a mobile network. Now, this is a fictional series, but actually the impacts that we see are quite similar to what we've uh, experienced in real life uh, with cyber attacks on networks. Um, we know uh, that mobile connectivity is really important to us. It's an important part of our personal lives. Um, but it's also important to society. And in fact, in the video series, Hannah says that it's a fundamental mm. uh, part of society. Um, let's maybe take a look at some of the impacts that we see from the outage. Sure. How will you be paying? OK. It's here. Oh. Mm. OK, one more, please. Should be money on it. Um, it says our network is down, sorry. Um, Okay, so as we just saw and as you also stated, mobile connectivity is really important for us. Now, unfortunately, at the same time, cyber incidents are becoming more frequent and advanced. And also the cost of a data breach is around five million dollars. Wow, that's a problem. Um, yeah. In episode one, we see uh, Theo's credentials being stolen. There's something still to be untangled here, Theo. What's going on? Look, you know I trust you, right? But if there's a but, you can usually forget the first half of the sentence. Your credentials were used for the attack. What? How common is this approach that we've just seen? <laughs> Good question. Surprisingly, this is the more common approach. So cyber criminals are more more easily getting access to the network by stolen or compromised employee credentials than through the traditional hacking methods. Now, Andy, we know that this is important and we know that this is becoming more and more frequent. What can CSPs actually do to minimize the risks of cyber attacks and keep their you know, networks and customers protected? Um, well, I think there's a need for a new approach, and that's because of the dynamic threat landscape that we face. As an example, you know, DDoS attacks, uh, ransomware, uh, phishing, insider attacks, mm. and so on. And all of this means that there's a need for uh, a new approach, one that brings uh, sensing, thinking, and acting uh, to play. And I think there's also a, a real need for a telecom-specific security solution. Okay, and why is the last part important? Why specifically telco-specific solutions? Because, you know, a generic IT solution lacks some contextual understanding of the telecoms environment. I mean, this is sensing that we've spoken mm. about before. And, you know, to give some examples, the network topology, um, locations where sensitive subscriber data is located, or perhaps, the, you know, the relationship between a network function and a service and an endpoint. And when you mention endpoint, you're talking about some sort of a computing device connected to the network, correct? Yeah, sure. So, uh, you know, a tablet, uh, a, a mobile device, um, a server, an IoT sensor, etc. Okay. And what specifically is the challenge in endpoint security in telco? Um, well, if you think about all of those different types of endpoint, they're bringing, you know, new attack vectors in. And I think it's really important that we have a, a telco specific security solution. So if we take a look at that, um, Nokia's solution is called NetGuard, Endpoint Detection and Response, or EDR. And you can see uh, that we have it running in the user space in green mm. here. That's really important because we don't want a security agent having any impact on the performance of the network. Makes and sense. we don't want it running in the kernel where it could impact on resource usage or performance of the, the network function. And, you know, we saw with CrowdStrike what happened when a routine software update to a security agent went wrong, mm. causing global IT outages. Yeah. And we can't really afford that in telecoms. No, no, I, I absolutely agree. And we do have an example of EDR solution. So our customer, Clara Colombia, uses our NetGuard security uh, software to protect their five, 5G network as well as their 35 million subscribers. And this solution specifically has the EDR that you just talked about, as well as a privileged access management system that also would have helped Theo in our series mm -hmm. from not getting his credentials stolen. 
Now, I also saw in a World Economic Forum that there is a shortage in cybersecurity experts. Is this a good reason now that TSP should actually really lean into AI and automation? Yeah, I think so. Um, I mean, aside from that, you know, we spoke about the dynamic threat landscape and the complexity of the network. And I think we're at the point now where humans on their own can't manage this. Uh, uh, so therefore, we do need AI and automation to stay on top of this. And as, as we said, we need a telco specific security solution to handle this. Yeah, I, I agree. Now, last spring, we launched NetGuard Cybersecurity Dome with GenAI. Could you maybe show us a little, little bit about the product? Yeah, let's take a look at the demo. Cool. So CyberDome is our award-winning SaaS security solution. It's bringing a unified view across all of the network domains. Uh, we're also bringing generative AI, and mm. on that, we developed that together with Microsoft, and it's helping security experts to um, understand what's going on in the network and to, to, to uh, get access to the right information. Uh, as you can also see, it's regulatory compliant. Yeah, regulatory compliance is changing around the world. So it is important as well that CSP stay on top of that as well. Yes, agreed. Aside from uh, generative AI, we're also using traditional machine learning. That's helping to spot anomalies, as an example, malware within the network. Uh, we're using that as well to calculate a dynamic threat score. Uh, and that's a number which gives us an mm. idea about the vulnerability of, of the network elements. Um, we also have... Uh, automation and automated playbooks to speed up our response. And by using generative AI, we can improve operational efficiency by up to 35% wow. and speed up the response to cyber threats by up to 50%. Great benefits. They can also help provide quantum safe connections as well. I, I think if the cyber criminals are using the latest tech, we need to be yeah. as well to stay ahead. Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. And, you know, in the games of the um, really, it's AI and automation that help Gary and Theo stay on top of things. Yeah, exactly, yeah. yeah. In our next episode, we'll explore AI and Gen AI even more and how those can help operators with their complex, complex networks. Uh, but in the meantime, please check our security website if you want to learn more how you can protect your network and your customers. Thank you for watching. Thank you.